Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We are the makers of plant-based fitness nutrition. Why is uh, why am I combining plant-based and fitness together? That's what I'm going to be talking about today. A new study shows how important that uh, fitness is, not only for things like you've heard me talk about type 2 diabetes, uh, keeping uh, your body weight in check, uh, blood pressure, all of the key elements fitness can help improve. And when you can add that to a plant-based diet, you can see some really remarkable results. We're going to talk about uh, how fitness and the brain go hand in hand. And we're going to talk about a brand new study that just came out in April. But before I get started, the disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any disease. All right. So the title of this is More Physical Act. Uh, fitness builds better brains. <clears throat> more physical activity resulted in this study and more gray brain matter as we aged. So this study is called, I'll go ahead and put it up on the screen. This is the title of the study. It was published in uh, the Neurology and it was published in April of 2022. So this is just a more recent uh, published study. And it talked about the title of the study is the role of cardiovascular risk factors on the association between physical activity and brain integrity markers in older adults. So the study looked at 134 co uh, cognitively unimpaired. So these are people with healthy brains, uh, so-called healthy, at least at, at the ages of around 65. So older adults and looked at their brain integrity over a period of time with exercise. So <clears throat> this is the interesting part. Um, we know that exercise can improve properly done exercise, especially with an, uh, a healthy diet combined with a healthy diet can improve uh, body mass index, which is how much body fat your body is carrying uh, compared to muscle ratio. And of course, your insulin. Insulin is what helps regulate blood sugar and blood sugar, as we know, is can be tied into uh, diabetes. Now, <clears throat> body fat is probably more the uh, problem and dietary fat by most of the studies out there uh, has been more closely related to type 2 diabetes than actual sugar. But sugar is the problem afterwards. Once you gum up the cells with fat, no more sugar can get in it. Basically, our cells say, hey, wait a minute, I've got enough energy inside the cell. Let's shut down the outside receptors so that insulin can't dock. And that's called insulin insensitivity. It's insensitive. It won't be sensitive to allow that insulin to dock to open up the cell to bring sugars or more energy into the cell. Body says, no, I've got too much. All this fat in here is loaded with energy. I've got more than I need. Let's just shut down the receptor sites. And that's really the beginning cause is fat buildup inside the cells. This leads to insulin uh, not being received at the cells. And then that glucose or that uh, sugar, if you're consuming that in higher quantities, can float around the bloodstream and degrade into AGEs, very toxic uh, molecules that can start to do damage. But remember, the, the fat in the cell is the cause of this. All right, well, let's look at the brain because the brain uses glucose. Actually, our, our brain uses an inordinate amount of glucose. It's the number one preferred uh, energy source for the brain is glucose or simple sugar. So why is sugar bad for us? Well, sugar is good for us when we break it down. And remember, proteins, fats, and carbs can all be broken down into glucose. So glucose is not the enemy. Glucose, as a matter of fact, is what the main chemical uh, that you start out with in the plant cells, plants make glucose, and then from that, they actually make all the amino acids, which is kind of interesting. It's the carbohydrate backbone of all the rest of the uh, chemical structures that make up uh, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. So it all starts out as glucose in the plant cell and then is converted into fats, carbs, and, and proteins. And conversely, when we consume fats, carbs, and proteins, we can break it all down to glucose. Now, the reason why we have that metabolism to break it down to glucose, 
is for our brains because our brain feeds almost exclusively on a day-to-day -day basis for the average person on glucose. Our brain needs a lot of glucose to function. Just simply thinking uses up glucose in the brain. Okay, but what you want is an efficient glucose metabolism. That's the part where it gets interesting, and that's where exercise comes in. Now, we knew exercise can increase and improve our body's ability to metabolize uh, glucose. Number one, it burns up some of the fat inside the cell, so allows the cell to open up those docking stations for insulin and increase sensitivity. So we know working out, a vigorous style workout, <clears throat> aerobic or, or resistance training styles workouts will get you increased sensitivity of insulin. That means the, the insulin will actually work better. So getting that glucose into the bloodstream, it'll get into the cells where it can be efficiently and effectively utilized for energy. The problem is, is when you are sedentary and then the body shuts down saying, I don't need that extra food, but we're still eating three times, four times a day, snacking and all that kind of stuff and stuff that is generally in the standard American diet, much higher in these uh, forms of energy, fats, carbs, sugars, etc., even higher amounts of protein, more calories basically than our body actually needs if we're sedentary. So what happens to the brain when we exercise? We know that the body or the muscle tissue mostly sensitizes and gets more efficient at utilizing that glucose. But what about the brain? And sure enough, I'm going to put this up on the screen because this is the exact quote from this study. And just put it right up on the screen so you guys can read along. So higher physical activity was associated with higher gray brain matter. That's the processing matter in the brain. That's where most of the processing is done, thinking, speaking, uh, learning, all of that stuff. The gray brain matter, that's what we normally think of the, the big gray part of the brain, uh, volume and cerebral glucose metabolism but not with amyloid deposition or white matter. Now, white matter is simply the uh, nervous systems that are going to the uh, thinking of a, kind of the gateways or the highways of the information getting to the brain, but all the processing, most of the processing is done in the gray brain matter. So this is really interesting. The more you exercise, the more actual gray, gray brain matter, the ability to think and process thoughts well, that's pretty amazing. That means the more we exercise, the more we have higher brain integrity. That brain can function better, function at a higher level, and have more actual physical gray brain matter. That's pretty important. But it's key to this uh, bottom part of the uh, sentence. It said, but not with amyloid deposition. Now, amyloids, amyloids can uh, gum up the insides of the brains and form plaques. And then the plaque can close off the dendrites and close them down and start to cause dendrite death. And that's when brain cells can die or start dysfunctioning because the nerves can't transmit through all the dendrites. You've got the axion of the brain cell right there um, and trying to transmit all these different uh, cell signals. And when they get all gummed up and shut down, you don't have as much firing or activity or pathways open in the brain. And this is where it becomes a real problem. So why is that? Well, exercise is not the magic bullet. It does help, remember, higher gray brain matter. That means you got more brain. You just need the ability to get those messages to the brain better. Now, what does that? Well, check out my, uh, check out my video on um, eating greens makes your brain younger great study that I did a whole video on, and I'll post it up here in the link so you guys can check it out. But you can check it out on our YouTube channel, Clean Machine Online, and I'll post the uh, post it up here on the screen so those of you who are watching it or want to look at it later. Um, so I, I did a video uh, about a study that showed um, the mental decline rate for those consuming just one and almost one and a half servings of green leafy vegetables today was equal to being 11 years younger in age, brain age, that is. 
So that's amazing. And why was that? Well, the fiber and the polyphenols, green leafy vegetables are very high in fiber, very high in polyphenols. Polyphenols are compounds, phytonutrients only found in plants. Polyphenols actually help protect the brain, but they also feed the microbiome and upregulate the good guys in the microbiome so that they are um, giving you uh, a good digestion and proper digestion so that the proteins that you're consuming don't get tangled. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to post this other study up in the links here because when you consume animal proteins, a pretty bad thing can happen. Um, animal proteins can be consumed by certain bacteria, bacteroides, certain groups of bacteria in our gut that can tangle or cause knotted proteins, misshapen proteins. And these proteins normally are protected from getting into our bloodstream, but the actual digestion of animal proteins produces these enzymes called uh, cadaverines, these metabolites and byproducts called cadaverines, putrazines, and spermazines. So these, these cadaverines and putrazines actually damage the uh, internal track of the digestive system and allow these big tangled proteins that are just formed from the uh, digestion of meats and, and dairy and eggs and even fish and these tangled proteins, then it opens up the gates because they're damaged. And now these tangled proteins can get into the bloodstream. They should never be able to do that. Eating healthy plant foods, you don't get these tangled proteins entering the bloodstream. So once these tangled proteins get into the bloodstream, they can start to form tau and beta amyloid plaques in the brain. So now we know it is a dual effect. The effect of both the uh, digestion of animal proteins causing these tangled proteins. Now, normally that wouldn't be such a bad thing because they shouldn't be getting into the bloodstream. We have a blocking mechanism that blocks them from getting into the bloodstream through our digestive tract. But unfortunately, during that digestive process of animal proteins, it produces these toxic putrezines. They're, can they're carcinogenic, they're cancer causing, but they damage the entry gates that would normally protect that uh, tangled protein from getting in. But once it's damaged, they have big gaps that the proteins can now enter into the bloodstream and they're collecting in the brain. This is forming the tau and amyloid plaques that we now know are the root cause of senile dementia and Alzheimer's. So this is how your food coupled with exercise by consuming plant-based proteins, you have these polyphenols, which are protecting the brain, which are the polyphenols are feeding your good guy bacteria so they don't produce these metabolites. You're consuming plant proteins that don't form these tangled proteins that form plaques in the brain. All of these things, you're protecting against it, you're preventing it from happening in the gut. So all the way along the process, you are protecting and, and preserving your brain. That's why this study showed just one and a half servings of green leafy vegetables today was equal to being 11 years younger in brain age. I mean, that's pretty phenomenal. And that's why just a little bit of plant-based, switching over to plant-based, even turning one meal into plant-based can really help performance. Add that to regular exercise like the very first one showed and showed you can have higher gray brain matter and better usage of the glucose that does reach your brain, cerebral glucose metabolism. Uh, but to get to those amyloid depositions, the amyloid plaques that are, that are key in findings of studies for Alzheimer's and senile dementia, you want to add that plant-based element to it, get that high fiber content, that high polyphenol content. Obviously, we've got a great way to get that protein in there, a plant-based protein that is high in fiber, a third of your fiber source in just one scoop, high in polyphenols, really rich in polyphenols. Remember, it's a whole green plant that's in this, not a stripped out protein just from uh, 
just getting the protein. You're getting all the green goodness and just one scoop in a smoothie in the morning and your body can be helped. It can be your improve your gut health, improve your brain health. You add that to a great workout and you can preserve that brain tissue. The studies now are showing this over and over, better glucose metabolism in the brain, better glucose metabolism in the muscles, lower risk for type two diabetes when you exercise and include a plant-based diet. This is why I formed my company about plant-based and fitness. Combining a good, healthy plant-based diet with exercise is the best way to protect your brain, preserve your brain matter, keep uh, optimal function and help reduce the risks of some of these disease states. So good old exercise and a plant-based diet, and you can really improve and enjoy health all three years. I'm in my 60th year of life, physically fit as can be, love exercise every day and have my clean green protein smoothie with lots of uh, berries in it for high, higher, even higher polyphenol content. Throw some berries in there, blueberries, blackberries, strawberries, uh, cherries. Uh, there's lots of different berries that you can put in there to really boost up that polyphenol level. Feed your good bacteria because they munch on. Uh, polyphenols are actually prebiotics like fiber is. So we now know that uh, the good bacteria actually take the polyphenols, eat them up, and actually spit out some metabolites that are even better than some of the polyphenols and are active in helping us uh, lower body fat, uh, improve our blood pressure, lots of great benefits from polyphenols. Just check out the research. I have fun doing it too. It seems to be more and more we're seeing the research really confirm what we knew all along, a good, healthy, whole food, plant-based diet, good supplemental nutrition to fill in the gaps and get getting that nutrition in on a regular daily basis along with exercise you can live a healthy, happy, prosperous life. That's what I want for you. Thanks for watching. As we have some great new studies coming out. There's been a really, I've got four or five new studies that uh, I want to talk about, all published this year. So brand new discoveries, really illuminating how uh, fitness and a plant-based diet can really improve your life. That's what I want for you. I'm trying to make it easier by making some of these supplements available to you in their uh, in their optimal states so you get the best nutrition possible. Look, I realize we're in a state where our food is not as nutritious as it used to be. It's not grown in the wild. It, the soil is over and uh, is depleted. So there are reasons, good reasons for making sure you get the proper nutrition that is missing. Look, if we're indoors, just like me right now and not getting out of the sunlight we have to replace that if we're not doing the things we used to if we're not outside drinking right out of ponds and streams which i don't suggest because the bacteria load puts it in a very unsafe but that's where we used to get our b12 so there are good places for d3 omega-3 uh, vitamin b12 supplementation they're really important because we've changed our life living style and we need to put those back in, especially if they're not readily available in plant-based sources or in some of the plant-based foods that we're eating that are really restricted. If you go to the produce section, you're mostly going to see bananas, apples, pears, plums, peaches, the exact same ones all over again. And they've been grown in crops over and over and over and over again and depleting the soil. So it's not the same. And we're not getting the variety of foods that we used to, to get the variety of different nutrients that we need. And we're in a way eating a lot more processed foods and stuff. So there's a really good place for supplementation. Uh, always should be exercise and whole food based plant-based diet as your basis and then fill in those gaps to live an optimal healthy life make sure you're getting all the nutrition in every day thanks for watching we'll be back next week with another great uh, study that i'm excited to talk about see you then